Hi, Future GISPs. I'm going to teach you everything that I learned to easily pass the GISP exam so that you don't have to spend years reading textbooks, getting degrees, paying for prep courses, and searching the internet for information like I did. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything I learned about data quality. Data quality is the third section under the Geospatial Data Fundamentals category of the GISCI Geospatial for Technical Exam list of knowledge categories. Let's get started with section 203, data quality. Data quality is the overall suitability of a data set. Types of data quality, according to the International Standards Organization, or ISO, are completeness, logical consistency, positional accuracy, temporal accuracy, and thematic quality. Completeness. Completeness is how well a data set captures all the information it is tended to represent. Logical consistency. Logical consistency is how well data from different data sources or layers are integrated. Positional accuracy. Positional accuracy is how close the locations correspond to the true values. Positional accuracy is also known as geometric accuracy. Temporal accuracy. Temporal accuracy is how appropriate the time frames in which the data was measured are for the use of the project. Thematic. Thematic accuracy is how different attribute values are from the true values. This is also known as attribute accuracy. Those were the five types of data quality according to the International Standards Organization, or ISO. Now let's explore some other aspects of data quality. The lineage of data is the sources, methods, timing, and persons responsible for the data set. The necessary level of accuracy. The necessary level of accuracy for a data set depends on the needs of the customers. Fitness for use. Fitness for use is how well data fulfills the needs of a project. Relevance. Relevance is the same thing as fitness for use. There are four types of accuracy for remotely sensed data. The types of accuracy for remotely sensed data are spatial, spectral, temporal, and radiometric. Spatial accuracy. Spatial accuracy is how geographically close data is to the true value. Spectral accuracy. Spectral accuracy refers to the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that are recorded. Temporal accuracy. Temporal accuracy refers to the time or interval at which measurements are taken. Radiometric accuracy. 
radiometric accuracy refers to the amount of different values that can be recorded for a measurement. Those were the four types of accuracy for remotely sensed data. Now let's take a look at some more general types of accuracy. Accuracy and precision. Sometimes the concept of accuracy is separated into accuracy and precision. In the context of accuracy and precision, accuracy is how close the mapped values are to the real world values. Inaccuracies occur due to systematic bias or flaws in the measurement methodology. Precision in the context of precision versus accuracy is how close measured values are to each other. Precision can be determined by the scale at which measurements were taken, consistency, randomness, and the exactness of measurements, meaning the amount of digits recorded after the decimal place. Timeliness. If data is collected at a point in time, it may no longer be accurate due to changes over time. Timeliness is also known as temporal accuracy. Legal area. The legal area of parcels are often determined by written descriptions on deeds. A GIS measurement may not line up with the corresponding legal area described in a deed or in a meets and bounds survey. Data validation. Validating data ensures accuracy and completeness. Data validation involves comparing measured data to real-world true values. Data validation requires a source of accurate data for comparison. Data validation may involve developing accuracy statistics to compare with data standards. See Section 205, Understanding Data Validation and Uncertainty, for more on data validation. Data cleaning. Cleaning data involves removing errors and standardizing formats. Sampling. Samples of data can be analyzed to estimate the quality of a total data set. Sampling data may involve choosing the locations, patterns, and numbers of samples. There are five basic methods for sampling data. They are systematic sampling, random sampling, cluster sampling, stratified sampling, and adaptive sampling. Systematic sampling. In systematic sampling, the whole study area is equally sampled. Systematic sampling may introduce a bias in the data if there is a pattern in the measured variable that coincides with the sampling interval. Systematic sampling is not good for data sets with areas of high variation. Random sampling. Random sampling involves selecting point locations using random numbers. Random sampling reduces the chances of bias because it's unlikely to match a pattern in the landscape. The downside of random sampling 
is that it does nothing to distribute samples in areas of high variation. Cluster sampling. In cluster sampling, cluster locations are chosen by a systematic or random process. The cluster shape may be systematic or random. The primary benefit of cluster sampling is reduced travel time. Stratified sampling. Stratified sampling partitions a population into subpopulations and takes samples from the subpopulations. Stratified sampling reduces the chances of having one subpopulation over or underrepresented compared to another subpopulation. Adaptive sampling. Adaptive sampling has higher sampling densities where the features are more variable. Adaptive sampling increases sampling efficiency because small scale variation is more heavily sampled. Adaptive sampling can represent large homogeneous areas with less samples. The root mean square error or RMSE. The root mean square error is the square root of the average of squared errors. The root mean square error indicates the distribution of errors from the mean. Mean absolute error. The mean absolute error is the average error. The mean absolute error is less sensitive to outliers than the root mean square error. The mean absolute error doesn't square the distances from the mean. C-section 605, Knowledge of Descriptive and Spatial Statistics, for more about data error statistics. A confusion matrix. A confusion matrix assesses the accuracy of an image classification based on additional ground truths. Classifications are listed on one axis and true values on the other axis in the same order. Correctly classified features intersect on the diagonal axis. A confusion matrix can be used to produce a kappa index of agreement where 1 equals 100% accuracy and 0 equals 0% accuracy. A confusion matrix is also known as an error matrix or error table. An error frequency histogram. An error frequency histogram summarizes spatial data error. The graph indicates the smallest and largest errors and the mean and most common errors. An error frequency histogram is a bar chart of range frequencies. An error frequency threshold. An error frequency threshold is a value that a specified portion of the errors occur above or below. See section 605, Descriptive and Spatial Statistics, for more about accuracy statistics and error frequency thresholds. Quality control. Quality control is product based. Quality control is reactive. 
Quality control is a corrective tool. Quality control involves a specific team that tests for defects. Quality control focuses on defect identification and correction after data collection. Quality assurance. Quality assurance is process-based. Quality assurance is proactive. Quality assurance is a managerial tool. Quality assurance involves the whole team. Quality assurance focuses on defect prevention before data collection. Periodic audits are often a component of quality assurance. A summary of data accuracy. Data accuracy is how well a representation represents the true shape, location, and characteristics of a phenomena in GIS. Determining accuracy requires knowing the true values. Data accuracy may be reported as a percentage of data that is accurate, as an average error magnitude, or as the percentage of points that are above an error threshold. It's important to note that the precision and scale of a number is different than the precision and scale of a spatial data set. The precision of the number 123.123456 is 9, because there are 9 total digits. The scale of the number 123.123456 is 6, because there are 6 spaces after the decimal point. See section 208, Knowledge of Spatial Data Standards, including ISO, FGDC, and OGC, for more about data quality standards. Now you know everything that I learned about data quality to easily pass the GISP exam. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can keep helping people pass the GISP exam and achieve the rewarding careers in GIS that they deserve. You can also find everything I learned to pass the GISP exam in my book, The Ultimate GISP Exam Study Guide, available on Amazon. My study guide is an easily understandable, comprehensive, graphical, all-in-one resource for passing the exam. You can find the link to my study guide in the description below. Thanks for joining me and congratulations in advance on passing the GISP exam.